Hello and welcome to the Grapeseed Official Podcast. We are back with another This and That episode, so welcome, Miklos. Oh, it is very nice to be here again. Thank you, Adam. When we talked about what the topic of the day was, Miklos brought up that he wanted to talk about our language arts elements in the program. We spend a lot of time really focusing on the oral language part, which is really the the foundation of Grapeseed, but we do have a lot of language arts built in. So we want to talk about those a little bit and why they're so important. So the floor is yours, Miklos. Yeah, thanks, man. Language arts is one of those terms that I think means something different to to whoever you ask. It's kind of like student-centered learning. Like that if you when you're talking about language arts like you have to make sure that whoever you're talking with has the same definition of of language arts as you do. And also the the reason for this topic today is because here in uh, in our coaching team, I just noticed through the coaching reports and through our through our our, our weekly discussions for through Gravesy Talks, this the the topics related to language arts like uh, phonics instruction and readers and writers and assembly on the whiteboard and all those things they come up really frequently and teachers sometimes uh, have struggles with certain parts of the language arts parts of the curriculum so i just thought it's a it's high time to to just address language arts directly but but like I said, the, the most important thing, I think, to begin with, uh, especially if you're listening right now and you're like, language arts, okay, I think I know what that means to me, but what does it mean uh, to to in the in the context of grapeseed? And obviously, you can go to the teacher manual, and there's uh, several pages worth of explanation about language arts, uh, and I definitely recommend that uh, you review it from time to time because it's it's very detailed and and very comprehensive and it's extremely helpful and you got to keep it in mind all the time. But basically language arts activities are, are the things that you do in your classroom, in your lessons that develop students comprehension and ability to use written, uh, written language. I was going to say written uh, over enunciating, but yeah, to use written language. And that means specifically reading, spelling, and then later on, obviously after units, after unit 21 and then up, literature and composition. And also language arts skills in grapeseed, like you said a second ago, Adam, like the language arts skills that are taught in the grapeseed curriculum are there to support and reinforce the oral communication skills that students develop uh, throughout. Because like you said, grapeseed is an oral language acquisition curriculum. And reading and writing, uh, language arts, basically, is there to support oral language skills and vice versa. Oral language skills support language arts. And, and it should be noted, too, that in, in any language, think about your first language. Uh, Whoever is listening right now, teachers and others right now, probably have a myriad of, of native languages. Uh, mine happens to be English. Um, and if you think back to when you were little and you were, were acquiring your native language, you probably, I'm guessing, you didn't start reading and writing instruction until you started school. And I use this story all the time about how if you just close your eyes and imagine the first day of first grade in any elementary school in the world, kids walk in and unless they've gone to some kind of like, you know, highfalutin kindergarten where they've done like, you know, calligraphy and stuff, which is, that's, a, that's an exceptional case. Most kids don't start their language arts and, you know, education until they start elementary school. But if you close your eyes and picture that first day of school, the thing that comes to my mind is the sounds of kids laughing and speaking fluently in their native language. And yet they, they're not really experts at reading and writing yet. That starts when you start school. And so the point of that being and the connection to grapeseed is that, uh, and th this is why grapeseed is designed the way that it is, that w whatever the language is, in our case, English, you as a student, as a, as a learner of the language, need a humongous amount of language exposure before you can effectively start to read and write. Absolutely. So, and I think if you're listening, you might just think, oh, this is really obvious and this is how it should be. And we totally agree with you. But if you think about a lot of other English programs, whether they are kind of after school programs or even kind of grammatical based public school 
ESL classes or EFL classes, we don't really see that. We see kids who kind of walk in and it's relatively early. And the first thing they have to do is start writing the alphabet. So they're, they're writing down letters that they can't really read and they don't really understand what they are. They don't know the sounds for each of the letters, but they mm -hmm. just have to write their ABCs, A through Z, capital and lowercase. And that's how they start their language arts skills in a lot of other programs, which now that you, if you think about it that way, how hard is it for that child to really grasp what is even going on? Like, okay, here's a, here's a, maybe it's, it's grayed out a little bit. So you trace over the letters, but you have to write oh, yeah. A to Z 26, right? Like lowercase and uppercase, but are you really learning anything? Is that really applicable knowledge to you at that point? Not really. Yeah, it's, that's, that falls under the category to me of just rote memorization of what for a lot of kids just equals hieroglyphics. Uh, there's no context. And of course, students need to learn the alphabet in order to be effective communicators of the English language, just like you but need to learn the writing to, system. Not of to, any for their first step. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, and that's why, and this, uh, this, this perfectly segues into the other thing that I, I think about all the time, which is a, a lot of teachers that we, that we work with, are uh, a lot of teachers get it automatically, but but for some teachers who, especially teachers who have come from teaching other kinds of curriculums where where it's you know rote learning or it's not definitely not a functional notional kind of experience for those students, it's it's more okay. Let's start with the alphabet, and I, I always and I've taught I've taught those before in the long before grapeseed, like you know where you start teaching the kids, you know, and you start with the uh, you start with the capital letters, and then. I remember coming to the first grapeseed training ever, and they were just they were like, "No, we're going to start with the lowercase letters." And I was like, "Really? Why?" And and when the when the trainer told me, because most of written language in English is lowercase letters, yep. why not just start with them? And I was like, "Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense." Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. I'm sad to say goodbye. It was a good day, but now I will say goodbye, my friends, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.